Well, after taking that left flap off of there and cleaning that up, I contemplated taking the rest of the controls off. The pivot points and everything on those are so crudded up from all of that congealed grease and oil on them that they're not really turning as freely as they should. And it's really hard to tell what kind of condition everything is in with all of that grease and stuff on there. And those pins have been in there for 20 years, well, 19 years. And I took those out and they still have a certain amount of CAD plating on them but I can't really tell what kind of condition the pins are. I stuck them in some solvent there and we'll get the dirt and the junk and stuff off of them. I've got new pins to put in there that I could have put in a long time ago. But I've got the ailerons and the flaps off of there now. That'll make it a little easier to move those wings around. You won't have to worry about booger and something else up on that while we're doing that. They're not that heavy, but it does lighten that up a little bit. I've just got them leaning up against the hangar door right now. Just kind of get them out of the way a little bit. Well, I've got to get those hinges and stuff cleaned up and get all the grease dissolved off of them. They're, they're pretty grungy. And there are the other controls, the two ailerons and the flap, and they're pretty crunt, crusted up with uh, congealed grease on there, the peralcotone and the other oils and stuff on there. So I've got rags in each one of those. That I'll have to wet those down with solvent again uh, kind of let it soak to soften that stuff up and then I'll get that washed out of there and get those cleaned up. I went down to the hangar and worked on these other controls, the other flap and the ailerons, finished cleaning all the gook and pucky, all of the peralcotone and grease and stuff off of those hinges on that. And that was pretty disappointing of all of them. This one was in the best shape. The other flap is not any better than this one as far as the hinges are on it. It cleaned up okay and it's serviceable, but the two ailerons, both of them, the paint flaked off the hinges, scraped it all off, got them cleaned up, but control horns on both of the ailerons are, they're still serviceable, but they're not great. This right one here, I brought it up here to the uh, basement to work on it. That spar is corroded on it where the hinge attaches to it, where that uh, control horn comes through there. It's cracked and corroded there. So I'm gonna have to take that apart get a new spar for that I guess. Those others I can clean them up. Like I said they're still serviceable, still airworthy. I'll clean them up, put some Cora Seal on them and stuff and maybe some paint and they'll be good for the season anyway. But that one there needs to be fixed before it goes back on the plane. Oh, I get an inspection on this aileron and after getting it up here and looking it over there is no corrosion in that spar but it looks like it got banged or something pretty good right there where that hinge and that control horn attach and the spar is cracked there. Got the fabric off of there and just like that flap. They've got masking tape in here to cover up these rivets and these lines here and the screws and stuff so that's going to be a pain in the butt to get off of there. Otherwise everything looks pretty good in here except down here on this end on the outboard end of the flap um, they run a steel tube out here to, to uh, fare out, form out this trailing edge of the flap out here on this outboard edge. And that tube is pretty rusted up, so I may want to change that. But otherwise it looks pretty good. This is the horn here, the control horn. And there's a dent and a crack right in here. And it goes right up here, right up into there. And then up here on the upper end, this section is cracked out right here. Now this is the hinge here and this is a control horn. They're riveted together. I'm going to call my mechanic and see if maybe we can put a doubler in that or anything because it's not cracked all the way through, but it's just a start. So I'm going to call my mechanic and see if we can patch that, repair it by putting a doubler in or something like that before I replace the whole thing. But whatever I do, I've got to take this leading edge off here anyway. There's four sections of leading edge and the inboard section there, center inboard, uh, center outboard, and then the outboard section. And I have to at least take off these two center sections here to get in there to where I can work on that if, we just, if it's possible to repair it. So I'm going to go ahead and get it ready for that. Well, by saturating some of these uh, cloths, some of these paper towels with paint thinner and then leaving them to sit 
uh, rolled up over the top of that masking tape overnight. I was able to get that masking tape to loosen up enough where it kind of come off of there a little better. I'm trying to avoid using acetone or MEK to get it off, but I'm going to have to use MEK anyway to clean the polytac off that leading edge before I put the fabric work on it, but at least I'm getting this masking tape cleaned off of there. I was looking back here at this trailing edge where it transitions here from this trailing edge, uh, the aluminum trailing edge over here to the end rib. There's a metal tube across there that fills that out and makes that bend in there. And this thing is pretty bad shape. It's pretty rusty. Oh, I was looking at replacing it. Well, I spent some time on the computer yesterday looking it up. I looked up a blueprint on this and I got the part number off that and looked it up and the only place I could find it was Univer. And they wanted over $50 for it, $57 or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But all it is is a piece of mild steel 3 8 inch tubing with a 28 thousandth wall thickness. There's no way that it costs that 50 some bucks for that piece. It's got just a little mild bend in it. Flattened out on, on one end here so uh, where it goes into this trailing edge. I was thinking about replacing it, looking at getting some and then I thought well maybe I should replace that with stainless steel so I was looking on eBay and places for some 3 8 inch stainless steel that size and I found some and then I realized I've got a whole spool of 3 8 inch stainless steel tubing that's exactly that same thickness and stuff uh, I bought several years ago so I'll probably take that out and replace that rib or that uh, that tube and replace it with stainless steel. Well, I'll keep keep working on this I'll get that tape off of there and then deconstruct that leading edge. I only have to take the leading edge, the two center sections of the leading edge off.